Hello, this is Jacob Avila of 5 Minutes Sono, and we are coming at you live from Cabo Fest 2018. I have next to me Sonia Reyes, probably one of my top three ultrasound fellows that I've had this year um, at the University of Kentucky. Um, and we're going to talk about a case, it's a theoretical case of a patient that is a dialysis patient, a known effusion, and comes in hypotensive. You look at the heart with the ultrasound, and it turns out the patient has an effusion. You knew that already. But the question is, is this effusion causing tamponade, or is it not causing tamponade? Is something else causing the hypotension? How can you tell? Um, so there's a couple things you can do. Uh, mm -hmm. When we took a look, we saw this you know, giant effusion. We didn't really know what to expect. Mm -hmm. um, but there was very, she was very unstable, very hypotensive, not a lot of cardiac just a squeeze in general. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of did our apical um, four chamber looked mm -hmm. at the at the RV size there and it was just very collapsible at that point um, so we looked at our parasternal long and just we could see that there was such a big effusion that mm -hmm. there was a lot of RV collapse um, froze it we kind of looked right at diastole right where the mitral valves were mm -hmm. open and it was like com almost completely flat gotcha um, yeah so at this point I think it's time to maybe stab her in the chest yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to talk with our resident expert on pericardial uh, effusion drainage, or pericardial synthesis, uh, as it's also known as, um, so you can give us a couple of tips. We have our resident expert on pericardial synthesis. We heard you had a great case on a patient that came in hypotensive, and we were wondering if you wouldn't mind walking all of us through how to actually perform this technique. Sure. Um, so pericardial synthesis is fairly similar to a lot of other procedures that we do. It's basically the Seldinger technique, but uh, you're going to the pericardial space to draw up an effusion. Right on. Uh, so that you need to do, obviously, is identify the, the problem, which is cardiac tamponade. Mm -hmm. uh, and the best way to do this is ultrasound. Mm -hmm. um, you can use whatever cardiac view you want to identify uh, the, the tamponade. And then you also want to use the ultrasound to identify your angle of approach towards the pericardium. Um, do you have any tips on how to actually like coordinate your, your needle with your probe? Um, yeah, that's a good question. So <clears throat> what I did, I'm right-handed. I like to hold uh, the ultrasound probe on this procedure in my right hand and then left hand with the needle. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think it's just personal preference there, um, but I feel like my left hand is stable enough with the needle. And really the, the key to the procedure is good visualization. Um, so using my most stable hand for the ultrasound, I get the best pictures and the best view of the heart and my needle as I'm going in. Um, so you, I put the, the probe right on the apical four chamber view here, and then my me needle was just medial to it, okay. and you angle the needle slightly so that you know, you're going in at a slightly perpendicular angle so that you have good visualization of the needle during the procedure. Gotcha. So, so you have done a two-person technique before, right? I kind of stabilized it after he had already entered the pericardium so mm. that he can get the guide wire in and everything else. So. Gotcha. Oh, that makes sense because you, you need yeah. that second hand to actually right. put it in. So you need like three hands really to do the whole procedure. Right. Right. Um, yeah, so... I see. So you uh, do it by yourself, and you ha you can hand off the probe to somebody else to hold it, and then you can then have your two right. hands. Sweet. Okay. So let's say because I think I'd be in this boat. Let's say that you're pulling out uh, some some fluid. It's really bloody. It's maybe a like high pressure, you know, because it's tamponade. Is there anything that we can do to confirm that we're actually in the pericardium and not accidentally in like the right ventricle? Yeah. So actually, for ours, that happened. We had a lot of very dark blood um, when we you know, started getting some uh, fluid back. And actually on the ultrasound, we thought we saw a little bit of like even bowing on the ventricle. And then we both oh, were no. like, oh my gosh, did we go through yeah. the ventricle? Um, but we actually then just kind of disconnected our, cause we had like the 60 cc um, mm -hmm. syringe. We just got a little bit of just normal saline and we flushed it and we just saw like bubbles in the pericardium right outside and nothing inside the ventricle. Oh, great. So that's, that's how cool. we were able to, confirm that.
So that was a great review of how to do it. Now let's actually look at some pictures. So this is a patient that might present hypotensive. So we have a fairly significant sized pericardial effusion. We can't really even see that right ventricle. And when the right ventricle is this smushed, it's a good chance, especially if the patient is hypotensive, that they actually have tamponade. So in this next image, we see that there's a pretty big pocket over here and a little bit easier to get to. So right here, look up here, you'll see the needle start to make it and pop into the pericardium right there. You can see the needle back off that mouse pointer. See it pop in right there? And there you can see the tip right there. So this is a needle that successfully has entered the pericardial space. And then you can actually see the guide wire right there. You see it right there being advanced? Let's wait for it to loop around and let's see if you can see it, see it really well there. You can see the actual J tip down here. So this is something that I have been doing lately, and that is when you get the needle in there, after you've pulled out a little bit of the fluid, you can go ahead and try and flush. The reason why you don't wanna like flush to start with is because if this is a hypotensive patient, they're very brittle. If you add more fluid in there, maybe even 10 cc's, that might actually kind of push them over the brink. So pull a little bit out, and then you can see, you see all this kind of stuff rolling around in there right now? Wait for it, right there. You see all that white stuff? You can actually kind of see, and this is just last frame really well, right there you see all those particles right here this is a flush and if you can see that flush just in the pericardium then you know that that is just in the pericardium and not inside the heart so you can see all those little particles moving around this is a good way to confirm that you are in the right place and then of course you can double check afterwards you can see compared to that first one this is a much smaller pericardial infusion. So I hope you all like this cool sauna, bro. And a special thanks to Sonia Reyes and Kyle Blomer for helping me out with this podcast. And if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to send me an email or a tweet. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Go to blog5 slash subscribe. Put your name and your email address in the little text box and never miss another video. And if you want these podcasts and videos sent directly to your smart devices, go to whatever podcasting service you use, type in 5 Minutes Sono, subscribe, and don't forget to leave me a rating or a review. Now, this stuff is all great, theoretically speaking, but if you want to do some hands-on scanning with us, go to BenFest18 or CastleFest2018.com, where we have a couple of local conferences that we do. Check it out.